Yeah, give the horns. I want to hear the horns. Please welcome producer, president of Marvel Studios, and chief creative officer of Marvel, Mr. Kevin Feige. Lots Hello. of horns. Come on, y'all. Hi there. Give me the horns. Thank you. Yeah, what's up? Thank you. <laughs> Well, it was, you know, we were finishing up the Infinity Saga. Uh -huh. We were doing the uh, uh, Avengers Endgame and, and thinking about what was next. Right. And that's when this opportunity to do television came up. And it really invigorated the whole studio and me to say, this is how we creatively continue to grow and evolve. Mm -hmm. And look at these first two shows, right? With Falcon, you have something that can, you know, comment on the state of the world. Yes. Uh, uh, even more relevant than it was when we started it by the time it aired and then wandavision itself is a celebration of this new medium that we are playing in for the first time but that we all grew up with and we all love yes. because we love television i hope wandavision is is a uh, salute a celebration of tv history and something that i love i love that people love the characters i love that they uh connect with the story of wandavision i also love that it's having new uh younger fans go and check out the dick van dyke Absolutely. show and check out the Brady Bunch, and check out all these shows that I'm old enough to take for granted that I watched on Nick at Night, yeah. but that people are now, WandaVision leading people to those series is not something I anticipated and makes me very happy. So please welcome the head writer, creator, and executive producer, Jack Schaefer, and director and executive producer, Matt Sheckman. Come on in. Hi. Hi, Jack. Hi, Matt. How are Hi. you? Hey. I love the horns. Come on, more horns for these so two. We love it. I know, it, it is. This show was a bit of a swing, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's weird because it does sort of make so much sense to us now. I mean, it really is inspired by how in the sitcom space, conflicts are re resolved in 30 minutes. Yeah. And, and your friends are your friends, and everybody knows your name, and, and everything is warm and comforting. And in this show, um, that's exactly what Wanda Maximoff wants. And, um, and I think one of the reasons it clicked for, for me and for the writers in my room is that that's how we feel about television entertainment. It's yeah. where we go for our comfort and, and for our love and for our fun. Yeah, we always wanted to avoid parody. We wanted to make sure that we were honoring the yeah. shows that were our reference points. And these were the best shows. These were the shows that were timely and timeless, like The Dick Van Dyke Show, like Bewitched, like I Dream of Jeannie and Brady Bunch, the shows that were about family um, and that seemed to last and be able to resonate generation to generation. And we wanted to honor them. So it was the best job ever because we just got to watch a lot of television episodes. <laughs> um, and we also talked to the people that made those episodes. We met with Dick Van Dyke. We talked to some other oh, folks. Awesome. Who, amazing chance. Yes, the great <laughs> Dick Van Dyke. Um, yeah. And we were trying to get in touch with, with the tone uh -huh. of each j j show and also how comedy changes over time. Mm -hmm. And we, were, we wanted to also make sure that production design and cinematography, we, you know, special effects, visual effects, that we were matching each generation uh, in their approach and we looked at old prints it was really an incredible experience for all of us to dive in and and learn about all these shows that we thought we knew but then we got to dig under the surface and yeah, really get gonna... to know them please welcome to the stage Agatha herself Catherine Hahn dun 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 it was Agatha all along <laughs> Hi. Well, I mean, for me, it was, it's always, I mean, it was the story. Yeah. For, first and foremost, it was, it was for me as a, as an audience member, the tiny little beating heart between um, Wanda and Vision in the middle of all of the blowing up of, and the high stakes of the universe falling apart in all those movies. The fact that that little love story had such equal weight to me emotionally was so thrilling to see that it was going to be examined in such a deeper way. So that was A. I was very excited. I love those actors. And then when I saw what Jack had laid out and that it was a witch, <laughs> and then when I knew, knew that Matt was going to be directing it yeah. and that he comes from the theater, and I, I just knew it was going to be a deep, deep dive, um, it was a, a no-brainer. No I was brainer. so thrilled. It's been a, you know, a, a very fun trip. The, the Marvel <laughs> fans are are so extraordinary I, I knew it going in and they have not disappointed it's 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 I, it feels I'm very very tickled and moved by it it's been a real real beautiful ride please welcome the director and the EP Carrie Scoglin hi Carrie come on in they're honking for you Carrie say hi to Anthony <laughs> and please 
please welcome the head writer, creator, and EP, Malcolm Spellman. Welcome, Malcolm. They're honking for you, too. And y'all better give it up for this man right here because he brilliantly portrayed the character of Isaiah Bradley. Please welcome to the stage, Carl Lumley. I leaned heavy, heavy into the characters, who they were, and why their stories would be relevant. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. how these stories, how these people sort of embodied what regular human beings were now going through. And, and, and I mostly stayed away from trying to pitch plot and just talked about how these journeys could be emotional and compelling and resonant. Uh, well, it was really important that we kept it very grounded. And I think that was, you know, baked into all of the creative. Mm -hmm. But we really wanted to be speaking, particularly coming off of Endgame, and this was uh, the sequel, uh, to be the com in the real world to complete. This was unlike Endgame, which was a spectacle. This was going home with Sam, yeah. going home with Bucky, and talking about their uh, emotional journey uh, and how they were going to find relevance. So it was really from everything that we planned and and the stuff that we didn't plan, uh, the magic that happened was really always coming from a very grounded, very real, very authentic place. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what I did was what I love to do in this work and what I love about the work is I was a partner in a, a collegial effort mm -hmm. between professionals. I took what Malcolm had written, which <laughs> was like... Um, slipping into a pool of warm water. I, there, was no, there was no turbulence <laughs> at all. I just gave huh? yeah. way to that. And then I relaxed into what Kari was doing, bringing the focus down in every scene. Um, and ease. There was, uh, you know, we're doing something dramatic, but that drama did not encroach upon our process. And I loved that. I also loved the man. I loved the idea of the man. Mm -hmm. I loved the idea of the kind of man he was, reminding me of the kind of men who affected me in my life. Uh, first, my father. 